How's it going, Andrew? Good morning. Yes, very, very early morning as we're here before we start doing uh, spring cleanup for the lodge. Since yep. you're moving or something, this was like the only time we could squeeze in an episode for our listeners. Yeah, I got to carry boxes around and stuff and pack up. So, <laughs> But, you know, and since we're here doing cleaning at lodge, I'm going to get myself in a cleaning mindset. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, clean out that. Clean out the rental before you, before you officially become a homeowner. I'm excited. I am excited. So... What's been going on? Not much. I, we had a heck of a entered apprentice on Thursday night. That was awesome. That was super fun and also a great turnout. I got nervous because I brought cookies and I bought 30 t- cookies. And when I was sitting in the lodge room, I was counting the people and I was like, there's more than 30 people in here. And I was like, I hope everyone doesn't want a cookie. <laughs> you know, that's been that's been happening a lot lately at lodges as I've been like traveling to other lodges for degrees and stuff. There seems to be big turnouts happening at lodges, especially for degree work. And it's awesome to see it. I love to see all the travelers, all the visitors, everybody moving around. It costs me a little bit more for the first round at Ginger's, but I am <laughs> Always willing to pay more if more people are willing to come sit and lodge and enjoy fellowship afterwards. Yep. And, you know, that's part of the uh, Lake Lodge hospitality. Right. But yeah, it was a cool, fun degree. Second time conferring. I really had fun with it. And yeah, you know, I, I made a couple of mistakes, but didn't have to get prompted and just kind of, you know, chugged along. And I think it was overall a really, really good degree. None of us are perfect <laughs> Ashlers. And, and to be honest, like I said that night, that was one of the best entered apprentice degrees I've ever seen. You did a phenomenal job. All the guys did a phenomenal job the floor work was really clean it was it was an exceptional degree so when i was i got to lodge early on uh, thursday like afternoon and i was in there by myself practicing for like three hours and so i just did three runs of the work i did just one just reading from the book to make sure i knew the words night and switch words because you know i can kind of do it cold but i probably would switch some words is what my thought was so i did it once from the book then twice without the book and then on the last one i was like all right you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna set the the ambiance correctly because that's what can be di- distracting during the obligation. So I turned all the lights off and just had the candles lit. And I was like, "This is the creepiest thing I've ever done." <laughs> it's dark. It's it's alone in this creepy lodge building when you're by yourself. You. It's spooky. And I kept thinking, "Oh my god, what if I finish doing this obligation and I look behind me and there's just a guy there?" <laughs> then, so that's something that's in the back of my mind the whole time. And so then when I finally turn around, I'm like. Ah, ah. And I was like, all right, we're good. <laughs> I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. <laughs> I didn't hear anything creepy, but it's just the ambience. And I scurried on over this to the place. secretary's desk and started turning the lights back on. Like, these lights back out. This place is haunted by past masters. I'm telling you, you just get that weird feeling in there if you don't hear something. And if our listeners don't know what we're talking about, go back and listen to an earlier episode where I talked about my experience being in the lodge room by myself with almost all the lights off. <laughs> They're just brothers. It's okay. They're just brothers. It's okay. They're just brothers. It's okay. Ah! <laughs> all right we should probably roll the intro and get to today's topic loosen up your ties and roll up your sleeves it's time for fellowship with matt and andrew the views and opinions expressed on this podcast are not necessarily the views and opinions of the grand lodge of wisconsin or any other Grand Lodge, or any appended body. So, today, today. We're, we're cleaning. We are cleaning. We are doing spring cleaning at the Lodge, and I figured that that would make it appropriate for us to discuss the importance of maintaining a presentable building. Yeah, and I think, you know, the challenge with building maintenance is that since it's a one, it's a volunteer organization. Two, that means none of us really own an organization, the building as an individual. So there's like no one person who's going to be always keeping tabs on the building. It's going to change. Right. And I think with that comes a lot of challenges because you're going to have a lot of, I mean, and pros and cons. Like it's nice that you get new blood in who can help and do things that may be some old, you know, members of the trustees or members of the lodge, not necessarily old in age, but maybe doing it for a while might have been like, oh, I'm not that comfortable doing that type of work and stuff. So it's good, but it can cause challenges. And you can see that around the country where lodge buildings fall into disrepair or they're not well maintained. And you'll see a lot of the, or the building so old that it's just very expensive to maintain. And you can see that you can, cause problems for lodges too. So being on top of, 
you're building, even if you're, that means if you're a lodge that owns a building, that's important. But even if you're renting a space, making sure that you keep the parts of the space that you rent in good order is something that's very important to a lodge. Agreed. But before we get into the weeds on that, I want to back up and mm-hmm. start with why is it important to maintain your building? And I, I'm going to go with My biggest reason, outside of the fact that you want it to last a long time, that's a given. We're just going to assume that one. You want your building to stay in good repair so you can have it for a long time and you're not looking at selling it and moving somewhere else or doing other stuff. It is the first interaction, potentially, that the public has with you is the visibility of your building. If it looks like it's in disrepair, they're going to think less of the organization. If it, you know, if you have events open to the public and they walk into a dirty building where the floors are sticky and stuff like that. It's going to lower their impression of the organization. Yeah, like floor tiles missing and stuff right. hanging out in places. Well, even just, you know, you know how sometimes if the floors haven't been clean, cleaned in long enough, your shoe sticks to the floor and sometimes it feels like your foot's even going to come out of your shoe when your shoe's just going to stay there. AKA yeah. all my houses in college. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a given. In I would lose shoes sometimes. <laughs> they had to stay on the floor. They weren't coming up. <laughs> you know, but I think that's that's a that's a real. It, your building is one of your most forward facing things, and therefore one of the most forward facing things for Freemasonry. And if it looks like crap, that doesn't bode well for the fraternity. And so, you giving a practical explanation. I'm going to give an esoteric right. version of why it's important. So, since the lodge or the building represents the temple, and the lodge meets at the temple to work, and the temple not only represents this physical building, it also represents the world, and it also represents, symbolically, the mason themselves, because it kind of has that above-below type of dealio, where it's like, it's a representative of a place, but it's also a representative of you working on yourself. Right. As a physical representation of that, it represents the individuals in the lodge, and I think through the, you know how they always say that cleaning can be therapeutic, right? right? Like if you have a messy house, you have a messy mind sometimes because the space you live in can kind of, you know, make you, it, it, it can actually affect you psychologically. Well, that explains a lot for me. <laughs> so like if sometimes if someone's depressed or they're going through something, sometimes people recommend like, you need to like find a way to start cleaning your house because that can kind of help clear some of the cobwebs and kind of make people feel better. And I think that having a clean and tidy lodge represents the people, and even if it's renters and their space is in order, it represents the mindset of that organization and that group and how organized they are. And I think that one-to-one can affect the individuals being like, we keep a clean space and I'm going to keep a clean mind. And I think that it can be kind of a powerful tool. I like that, actually. That's really good. That's probably, well, I, we, I like that we tackle things from two different directions like that. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's always great. But I really I, I like that a lot. And, uh, you know, to, uh, right, so to kind of go back to some of the points you were talking about before, if you're the owner of a building, it's also your responsibility to make sure that that space is clean for anybody else who uses it. Especially if you are, I guess we're not technically renting it out, but we have people using right. the space. You have people using it, you know, other people using it. Yep. And it's your building, and therefore it's your responsibility to make sure that things are in working order yep. for the other people that use your building. Things are clean for the other people who use your building. It's also their responsibility as being, quote-unquote, guests of the building yep. to <clears throat> make sure that they leave it in the same condition and they found it in or better, right? Yep. And like, so it's interesting because, yeah, so the bodies that are guests in our building, they pay a maintenance fee. So there's an expectation on the lodge that is the owner to make sure the building is maintained right. because there's kind of a social contract there. Yep. If they're paying us to do maintenance and we're not maintaining, then it kind of feels crappy. Right. To be like, oh, I come in here and it's always junk and, I, and I'm and i not in charge, so I can't fix it. So it's important if you are having other bodies and groups and lodges meet in a building that your lodge owns to maintain it. But then also, if you're a, a someone who is within those buildings, 
We all know that Masons like to collect trash. Well, the, the, we're hoarders sometimes. <laughs> yeah, there's a hoarding. The hoarding is a thing that it comes to me. No one wants to get rid of stuff and anything like that. And I get my hand slapped because I throw stuff out. But the thing is, is when you're using a building too, your stuff can start to collect and then start to grow and move out of its proper spaces into other spaces as you try to you know, collect as much as you can to a certain extent. And before you know it, you're out of room. Yep. And then every storage space is filled and it, it can become like a really tangled mess of knots trying to get everything in good order. And that's why, you know, at Lake, we yearly try to go through every single cover. We pull it all out. We get it back together because the consistency in the cleaning is what makes it not as hard every year. Whereas if you put it off for like five years, suddenly it's it's a big ordeal <laughs> to get it cleaned up. Well, and, you know, if you go through, you know, like we're about to this morning, you go through the building with a relatively fine tooth comb and you're cleaning stuff and you, you get to identify problems early before they become a big problem, right? You know, preventative maintenance is something that I feel like a lot of these buildings overlook. It's really reactionary a lot of the time. Right. If enough people throw a fit about something, it'll get fixed. But it you need it should be taken care of as soon as you can. And there's problems in this building that we're still working on right. fixing that are challenging. Well, not even I'm not even thinking from the aspect of people throwing a fit about it. You can identify problem. You know, preventative maintenance can save you a lot of money in the long run versus waiting till the roof caves in because it's been leaking for 15 years. You know, so I think I think lodges need to think about having a, a fun setup which sometimes can be hard but you know if you have other bodies that meet in your building maybe you guys can all work together on it but having some sort of fun set up on the side and make sure they're staying up on their preventative maintenance make sure that you're you know inspecting your roof every five years or so to see how you know see where you're at or keeping track of where it was done or making sure you don't have any water leaks or if something's coming up on needing to be replaced just replace it don't say well it's not malfunctioning now and then waiting until it causes you a bigger problem yep and then waiting until it goes from being something that i mean it's like a lot of times People are looking for the path of least resistance. So if something's not totally broken, it'll be like, "Ah, we can figure it out later. But then that later never comes. And it's important that if you have the funding, you try to jump on it. And if you don't, you start to plan for the inevitable thing. Because or else you're going to be in a, you know, if you're not planning for that and you don't have the funds and something craps out like the HVAC system, now it's, it's, it's really bad. Yeah. And, you know, like uh, one thing we've been trying to put forward, so, you know, we have to stay up on, you know, the fire safety and all the inspections Mm -hmm. that, you know, you're required by your local municipalities. And we're working on, as in our trustees, because me and Matt are both trustees, because, you know, we don't... Scratch that. I'm not a trustee right now. (laughs) Oh, yeah, he's the master. I sit with the trustees because I am the worshipful master. He took a year out, yeah. But he still sits in there and bothers us. So (laughs) the thing is, like, we're trying to put forward something that's easy. So, you know, what we're talking about, there's always turnover terms get up for trustees and every lodge is a board of trustees those terms move over and one of the biggest challenges is what type of resources do you have available for the coming in trustees to try to have some sense of continuity so we're trying to create right now a maintenance checklist that can be passed down to say all right this needs to be done every month this needs to be done every quarter this needs to be done every year right. to make sure that you know if someone steps out and they kind of did so let's say someone's a trustee and they're like oh i'm always the one who checks the fire alarms and they step out and they don't think to kind of instruct that it can kind of get lost in the weeds for sure and i mean that touches on good leadership a little bit right you should always be training your replacement you should always be having the information available for your replacement and especially in like masonic positions like this like you sit in the east for a year you know you should be training your replacement you can only sit as a trustee for so many number of years right so you should definitely be setting up the people after you for success you should always be training your replacement and always making those transitions as smooth as possible so having a list of maintenance things so nothing gets missed from when this person's done being a trustee and this person starts being a trustee is almost necessary because otherwise stuff will get missed and then fingers are going to why did this get missed and there's going to be disharmony and everything else just create the documents create a plan have smooth transitions and always be training your replacement. Yep. And I mean, we'd have like a trustees handbook 
thing. Mm-hmm. I glanced at it. It was, I think it's a little bit out of date, but it's hard because it, it it's such a complicated position because it's kind of like, I don't know, whatever's in the building, but there are things that are always going to be work that needs to get done. So yeah, it's hard to always do that. And I think one thing that can benefit lodges and you know, even I would have liked when we were coming in because we went in at trustees pre- last year at the same time would be like trustees orientation where the old trustees come in and be like, all right, this is what we've been talking about for the last three years. This is everything that's in the hopper and kind of level set the newer people. Because sometimes when I remember when I came into that room, I was I was overwhelmed. I was like, I don't know what the hell this is. I, I think you could actually make that easier. And I might have just had a light bulb go off for something we could do Ooh. with the trustees moving forward is maybe the December trustee meeting. Before mm. installation, you have the new guys come in, right, and yeah. sit with those trustees. And then the January trustee meeting, you have the trustees that just stop being trustees still come sit in in that meeting. So you have two months of <clears throat> transition time there. Yeah. Where you bring the new guys in before they are, and you bring the old guys back after they're done, yeah. right? You know, and then you you have a two month overlap there where everybody can get their ducks in a row and pass stuff along. Yeah. And then you can sit with the trustees you're going in for to kind of whisper questions like, what is like the standard stuff? Or ask the whole group right. and or say, like, whole, how do we kind of yeah. do this stuff? Like, how do we how do we buy stuff <laughs> and put it in the building? And yeah. like, you Who, know. who's responsible for buying this? You know, who's responsible for getting that? Or How's who's, work assigned? Right. Who's responsible to make sure that there's toilet paper in the building? You know, yep, that, <laughs> was a, that was a, we had a debacle in like the first so we had a bunch of trustees hit their term kind of all at once. And so a bunch of us new guys came in and then there was a toilet paper situation where some group was like, there's no toilet paper in this building. We're like, oh my God. We only had, we only had two trustees hit their term at once. So I think those were the ones who were kind of keeping tabs on that. Right. Yeah, no, <laughs> so I think I, they were. Then so I ran to a, like a bulk store and I bought so much toilet paper that there's a tower of it. Well, right. I can tell you the trustees probably won't have to worry about toilet paper for about three years with how much you. <laughs> I put it in like every cupboard. I'm like, dude, they can't, they can't be mad. I got so much toilet paper. Uh, but no, that's. I think, I think I just had my idea, and I think I'm going to recommend that doing that moving forward because I think that's a great way to do that transition. Yeah, I think on top idea. of on top of having that maintenance schedule and you know a checklist and you know divvy it up and you know you always have people coming in and going out and you know we have a two two one right for our how trustees change so you know one year two go out another year two go out and then the third year one goes out and you know unless they're up uh, available for re-election sure you know so it's a two two one so you're always changing that but you could have like you could make it where like okay when you're done whoever comes in in your spot the responsibilities you had are now their responsibilities. I mean, it doesn't even necessarily need to be like or, a serfdom system where you're taking your, at least at that those two meetings, right. your responsibilities need to be discussed and divvied and probably a chunk of those. If we need to shuffle things, you need to pull things from other people and put them right. into order. I think I think maybe we should at least take the responsibilities of the trustees and we're getting into the weeds here and divide them into fifths, you know? Yeah. And then have those fifths and when you bring new guys in go all right this is what the us are doing already this is what's available to do who wants to worry about doing what when they can discuss if there's like a skill set that they're like i'm not comfortable with that and someone's like you know i'll give you this if you take that and you're like all right you know I think also it would pay, like, it's important to make sure, like, we've talked on organization about making sure roles are defined and responsibilities are defined because that's how you are successful. And I think it also pays to make sure that the chairman, the secretary, and the treasurer of the trustees have a really defined what their responsibilities are. I agree. Like, I think with the secretary, it's pretty easy. I mean, I'm the secretary right now. You just are recording the minutes, but that takes some learning too. So it's important that if you're taking that job that you do sit with the past one and actually, I didn't know how, I just was Googling how to do it. (laughs) And, you know, with like the chairman, that's a hard job. And, you know, a lot of their stuff is, you know, going, kind of keeping the meeting going, help with the assigning of the work because it can be awkward where you're like, okay, who wants to do this? And you stare at a bunch of blank face masons who are like, not me, not me, not me. And you're like, and start being like, no, hey, so-and-so, you want to grab this? And if you say their name, they're like, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. So, well, and I think there's, you know, that comes down to you also have to know the skill sets of the the other people you have in the room. I don't know mm-hmm. how we went from building to trustees, but I suppose building and trustees go together. These so, are same, same. I think it's important that you know the skill sets of the people there because, like, if you have five trustees sitting there and only one of them knows how to hang drywall or, you know, replace a drop ceiling tile or something like that. Guess who's going to get that job? <laughs> Every time. <laughs> right. You know. you know how to pl- do plumbing? Uh-oh. <laughs> right. You used to be a trustee and you know how to do plumbing? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, but it's playing to the skill set of the people because, you know, maybe then you don't have to hire a professional, right? Maybe you can save a little bit of money there if you have if you have people that are able or at least willing to learn and, okay, yeah, might, maybe they screw something up in the process of learning it, but... The, the, it's a couple extra bucks to correct it. Yeah. Well, and I, I think the only reason we're kind of going down the trustees rabbit hole is really when it comes to building maintenance, they're going to be the ones who are taking the charge, going to the master. And it doesn't mean the trustees are always the ones doing it, but they're right. going to be the one communicating the needs to the master to lobby support or physical hands from the brethren. Yeah. So that's why, like, if you're trying to say, like, oh, you know, these things, like, even if you're just a you know, using a building and you don't own it, it's still the trustees who are going to be the ones who kind of pay attention to how things are stored and stuff, because right. that's kind of the, the committee of sorts that's overseeing those types of affairs. Well, and yeah, and the money and the purse to make adjustments and help with things and fix stuff. That's those are the people that you kind of want to work with. And so if you're even just a brother who's trying to say, I would like to see some thing like improvements or cleaning and stuff like that, at the building, oftentimes you're going to have to go to the trustees and the master to get that process going. All right, so quick summary here as we're going to have people roll it in soon to start cleaning up our building and taking care of it. As far as building goes, preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance costs you less in the long run. Have a fund available to do said preventative maintenance or start working on building a fund now to do it. Your building is your public face, your first inter first face that the public sees so try to not have it be in disrepair trustees need to be have defined roles and always be training your replacement yep and remember that the lodge is a representation of the individual and the and the group so make sure that it truly represents the individual and the group awesome all right well we will get into news and events shortly and yeah cool we'll talk to you guys in news and events All right, now it's time for some events. We will start out with May 26th, coming up just a couple days after this episode. Wacoma Lodge, number 90, will be having an oyster stew and chili night. May 29th, the Valley of Madison Scottish Rite will be doing their installation of officers. May 31st, the inaugural... Grandmasters Open Charity Golf Outing to benefit Children's Dyslexia Center in the Scottish Rite Valleys of Eau Claire, Madison, and Milwaukee. It will be at House of the Rock Resort and registrations at 9 a.m. with the shotgun start at 10.30. Moving on to June. June 7th and 8th is this year's annual communication. If you're going to be there, please stop by and see Andrew and I as we will have a table set up there and we will be trying to get people on microphones. So if you like the podcast, have any interest in maybe doing a quick little blurb on the podcast, we're going to try to put together an episode or two where it's just people we run into at annual communication. On June 11th, the Valley of Milwaukee Scottish Rite is having their officer installation. On June 13th, Eagle River Lodge number 248 is doing a Ladies at the Table, seven course French cuisine, wine toast, and there's a gift for the ladies. $30 each. Please contact Past Grandmaster Carl Uso for further information and to RSVP. On June 14th, North Star Lodge number 187 and New Richmond Lodge number 195 are hosting a joint pork chop dinner at the American Legion Post number 80 in New Richmond, 5 p.m. till it's gone. $10 in advance or $12 at the door. June 16th is the Watoma Father's Day car show from 8.30 to 3 p.m. That seems like it's going to be a fun event and I will actually be going up there. It's going to be at the Washer County Fairgrounds. Please contact Worshipful Master Adam Rigdon for more information and there's also an ad in your Wisconsin Masonic Journal. On June 22nd, Wisconsin Freemasonry Acts of Kindness State Patrol Initiative 
Rattlers baseball game, 7 p.m. at Witter Field in Wisconsin Rapids. You can find more information about that on page 14 of your Wisconsin Masonic Journal. On June 24th, Glen L. Humphrey Lodge, Feast of St. John the Baptist. At 6.24 p.m., fellowship food and discussion with Brother Christopher Lucky. Full roast beef dinner, $25. They will be opening in the EA degree. Please purchase your tickets by June 17th, and you can find the email to RSVP at on in your Wisconsin Masonic Journal. Also on June 24th, I know Watoma Lodge is doing a Feast of St. John as well well and that will be up at their lodge building i will be traveling up there for that as well it is starts at 6 p.m and you can purchase tickets on eventbrite for that and that again is at watoma lodge seems like there's going to be an education and that is open to the public on june 30th reedsburg lodge number 79 is doing a car show from 10 a.m to 4 p.m Registration at 9 a.m. If you want to register a car, it's $10 a car. It's at the Reedsburg Historical Society Log Village. Please contact Brother Richard Bennett for more information. Also, if you're listening locally in the Milwaukee area, on June 15th, Lake and Damascus, along with potentially Bethel number 6, are going to be doing a park cleanup at Humboldt Park. If you are interested in that, please contact myself. Matt Conrad, either via the email that you can find in Maury or flyer that's going around for that event, or feel free to email timeforfellowship at gmail.com. We will catch you up on news last week. We actually had to stop recording partway through this episode because our spring cleanup at our lodge was happening that we had mentioned earlier, and Andrew has got other obligations to pack as he will be moving soon. So we will catch you up on news next time, but there is your rundown events. I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you next time.